from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Right down our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I hate even promoting these Fox reality shows because that Mike Darnell and we got into it one time when we got thrown out of uh, a taping of the old show Celebrity Boxing. Yeah, we were thrown out. Art doesn't know about this. We were, went to see Celebrity Boxing, and we got tossed because they were afraid we would go on the air and reveal the winners. I said I'd sign a release, you know, like confidentiality clause or something. And they uh, they uh, said, that oh, that, that would be fine. They signed off on that at one point. And then the, the security people came and escorted us out of the studio. It was over at... Uh, KTLA here in Los Angeles, they were doing celebrity boxing, this big studio there. And uh, Mike Darnell is the uh, the uh, executive in charge of reality programming for Fox. And then we went on the air and gave out the names of the winners of the uh, celebrity boxing matches. They threw us out. So somebody from Mike Darnell's office, they didn't realize, I guess, that we would have all the phone numbers of the people who called our 800 number. And uh, somebody from his office called here. Uh, lied about who all the winners were, <laughs> said they were all the opposite of who the winners actually were. But uh, I think that was the last episode of Celebrity Boxing. I don't think they did it after that because the ratings were atrocious. So uh, we had it out with Mike Darnell that time. But there he is with another show. This show, he, uh, he has uh, – licensed the rights of this show from a TV network in Colombia. It's called Moment of Truth. And a number of you have uh, sent me emails about uh, last night's edition of Moment of Truth on Fox. And the way this show works is uh, they ask uh, they ask a series of very personal questions of people. And the more personal the question, the more money you stand to win, and they hook you up to a lie detector. And if you tell the truth, you move on to the next level and you uh, you win more and more money. It kind of looks in a way like who wants to be a millionaire, one of those game shows. Um, but uh, this is what they do. They sit you down, they hook you up to a lie detector, and then they ask you these questions. So uh, what we're going to play for you now happened on Moment of Truth on Fox last night. This is uh, somebody named Lauren Clary. And she's talking about her husband, Frank Clary, who you'll also hear on this excerpt. Lauren Clary was hooked up to the lie detector, and she was asked some questions by the host of Moment of Truth, Mark Wahlberg. And here is what happened. Here's another question that your ex-boyfriend, Frank, will ask. In play. So, I've given Frank an alternate question. It replaces the one that Monica stopped. If you are truthful, it'll be worth $100,000, and I hope, Lauren, that that is a, a gamble that's worth it for you. So, ex-boyfriend Frank, once again, question 15. <clears throat> Do you believe I'm the man you should be married to? Um, I'm going to be honest and say yes. That answer is... Oh, 
true. I'm not sure what to say. You've answered 15 questions truthfully. You've won $100,000. Uh, first of all, Frank, is there anything you want to say at this point? No, there's, there's really nothing else I can really hear, so might as well just go for it. Have you guys talked about this ex-boyfriend at all? Yeah, earlier on in our marriage, but I mean, I didn't know he was still an issue. I mean, with an answer like that, I can only uh, assume that you're, you're not happy. Are you unhappy? Sometimes. Sometimes. Now, later in the program, she was asked, amazing as that is, she was asked if she's had sex with anyone else since marriage. Of course, then she moves up and makes even more money. And she said yes. And uh, the lie detector said that was true, and she made even more money. Here is my question for you. Your wife has just not only embarrassed you on national television for money, but she has confessed, number one, that she should be married to her ex-boyfriend and not you, and that she's had sex with at least one other person since getting married. Isn't the course of action here simply to take half of everything she has, including whatever she won, a half a million dollars, whatever she got, just take half of everything she has and get the hell out of there? I don't know where this guy is today, the husband. I'd love to talk to him. I'll bet he lives in SoCal. I'll bet they live in SoCal because the show is produced here. I'll bet somebody knows this guy. He hugs her at the end of the show. Oh, he hugs her at the end of the show. Yeah, well. <laughs> By the way, I love it. The audience is like, yeah. That answer is true. Very good. Good answer. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. What kind of a moron would stay with his wife after that? What kind of a, of a pussy? What kind of a, a, a... The guy's a complete doormat. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Is anybody out there capable of telling me why you would stay with somebody? How could you love somebody who just did that? How could you? Are there any circumstances under which you would stay with somebody like that? If this guy stays with his wife, is he the biggest pussy in the world? Lightus. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Can you name five things women are good for? Yes. Cooking, cleaning, <laughs> ironing, packing my things when I leave town. <laughs> Preparing my documents for when I leave the country. It's the Tom Likas Show. Do you believe? Hey, it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Ken. I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. How are you? I'm doing okay. Okay. Hey, just a few days. I was watching the show last night, and to answer your question, first of all, would you stay with someone like that, that money-grubbing whore? The answer is absolutely not. Counseling doesn't work and all that other stuff. There's no way to save that marriage. As a matter of fact, her husband should have had a big P on his forehead, but you know, earlier on in the show, they asked her if she wanted to go on because the questions were going to get personal. And she said it wasn't about the money. It was about getting things off her chest. But actually, we know it was about the money. And the question... Uh, I, want to, was, I want to tell you something else, though, about this. You know, Fox has a very checkered past uh, with reality programming. Right. Now, I thought game shows were supposed to be regulated by the federal government, but uh, this woman, like others who've been on Fox reality shows, like that one called Who's Your Daddy a couple of years ago, uh -huh. this woman is an actress-slash-model-slash-whatever.
right. with an online resume. We've uh, looked her up on MySpace. We've looked her up other places. Okay. And it looks to be another perennially unemployed Hollywood or New York actor. Right. Uh, who appeared on this show. God only knows if she's really married. God only knows if any of this stuff was true or if it's even a real lie detector. Who even knows? Well, that's true, but the, here's the irony of the whole thing. You know, she went on to answer more questions in the way the show works. If you lie, you don't get any money whatsoever. Right. And she lied and lost everything. But so didn't, unless, now, didn't she, what? didn't she, the, the, the lie, the supposed lie, wasn't she asked a question that was essentially an opinion? Yes, about herself, you know. She thought she was a good person, something like that, even though she stole before, I believe it was. But the the thing is, though, if you're going to have a show like that, you might as well, I think it would be more exciting, too, for her to go ahead. You know, it depends on what Fox wants to do, but generally speaking, it would be you know, more fun, I think, for the audience to see her go on and make more and more money. But maybe that's the outcome that they wanted, to see her say all those things and then lose everything, and maybe they paid her some fee for her acting. I don't know. It's, it's difficult for the viewing audience to know what the intent of the producers of the show are. Yeah. Well, so, but, assuming everything was true. If that if that man is married to that woman and what they all said was true, why would he want to stay with her? Well, I don't think he would want to stay with her, but the guy, like I said, he should have had a big P on his forehead because she definitely had his, uh, his balls in a jar somewhere. But the question that they didn't answer, her sister, I believe it was her sister, stopped the question, and that question was from her ex-boyfriend also. And the question was, if I wanted to get back together with you, would you leave your husband? And the sister stopped that question from being answered. Oh, boy. So, but I'll tell you what, actress or whatever, she exemplifies a lot of the women who are out there that are only in it for the money. Well, I agree with that. Tom, can you take me out old school? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Barbara on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. How Hi. you doing, Tom? Happy Tuesday. Thank you. How you doing today? Great. You know, I had to call in. I've never actually gotten through, but it was important to me to get through tonight because I honestly never even heard of that show and was just flipping channels last night. And it was like watching a train wreck. It was amazing how unbelievable the whole situation seemed to me. And frankly, if the guy did keep the girl, and I'm a girl. It's, you know, so, you know, a lot of times girls don't say crap about girls, but that girl was crap, and he's even more crap if he stays with her. What an idiot. What, and she lost. That was the best part. You know, like the last guy was saying, maybe they set it up that way, but I'll tell you what, it was poetic justice to watch her lose. And then she cried <laughs> at the end, and, and then the idiot hugged her. Uh, the husband hugged her? He hugged her at the end. He hugged her and her whole family. Like, what a fool. Around her. Oh, poor baby. I, you know, if that were my sister, I'd have probably popped her in the nose. What a and fool. And I'd have popped her boyfriend standing on stage, too. God, it was, it was honestly, it was like watching a train wreck. I'm not a big, I don't watch reality shows because they, they are pretty annoying. But that one, I, I honestly, I just watched that last about 10 minutes of it, and I couldn't stop watching. Are you aware that this show, I don't know if it's still off the air, but it was taken off the air in Colombia because uh, a woman uh, said that she had killed somebody? Oh, my God. Well, yeah, you know, I guess if they're supposed to be answering correctly and answering honestly to money, what people will do for money. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's completely amazing. Hey, it's really cool getting through to you, though. I've never gotten to talk to you. just gotten to listen to you. I listen to you every night on the way home from work. I love that. I don't always agree with what you say, but that's what makes you so cool to listen to. I don't agree, but you don't care that I don't agree. That's right. I, I'm happy you don't agree because you're a chick and it's a guy's show. Yeah, well, you know, but you, I got to tell you, I'm a chick, but I'm, I've seen everything that you talk about. I don't see it in every woman, but I see it in a lot of them, and especially the generation right behind mine because I'm 46 years old. Man, these little girls are coming up so strange. I'm so glad that I have boys. Be here to teach boys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. All right. Appreciate the call. Here's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay. 
This is a first time, long time. Thank you. How are you doing? You already asked me that. Oh, I didn't. And I well, answered um, it. Uh, well, I was telling you. Uh, I said I was fine. Oh, great, great to hear that. And then you asked me how I am. <laughs> uh, I'm fine. I was, I was talking to your screener regarding Still the fine. show from yesterday. And, I'm sorry. Uh, I was telling him that there's. Um, oh, you were telling my. What were you telling my? You were telling my screener something. Yeah. Also, he knows what you were going to tell me. Repeat that again. Does my screener know what you were going to tell me? Uh, well, actually, let me tell you then. No, no, you uh, already told it to him, right? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll ask him. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> could you step in here, please? <laughs> what was David going to say on the air, Dean? Yeah, he said there, this was something that was similar to a Spanish uh, television show that exists, and he felt that Which it Which I already said it was on in Colombia, yes. Yeah, and he felt that the entire premise and everything was fake, so he didn't really buy into the whole thing, and it's already been done in Spanish language. All right, so you two have already talked about it. <laughs> yes. Do you feel satisfied with, with that answer? Well, I mean, I have to go with what you say. He said that you and he had quite the conversation. You uh, you uh, chit-chatted quite a bit, and uh, appears that uh, he felt that uh, you would know everything I needed to know about what he had to say. I guess so. He uh, The wheels came off for him, I suppose. Well, uh, again, I, I repeat to the audience, this is not professional uh, phone calling to a radio program. When you call in, you talk to the screener. When you get on the air, you are supposed to pretend that we've never met, that I don't know what you're calling about, that you never spoke to the screener. Getting on the air and talking about your conversation with the screener is unprofessional. It shows that you do not know how to be a talk show caller and you don't know how to listen to a talk show. TV talk shows, they pre-interview the guests on TV talk shows all the time. George Clooney does not come on TV and go, Well, Jay, I was back there in the green room and your producer was asking me this question and I already answered it. George Clooney pretends he never heard the question before and he answers the question, which is written on a little blue card Jay Leno has that has the question and the answer on the card. There are no surprises. But Jay is acting by asking George Clooney about his car collection, like he doesn't know if George owns any cars. And George is acting by pretending he didn't tell the producer before the show what kind of cars he owns. So when somebody calls in here and says, oh, yeah, well, I was already talking to your screener. Nobody cares if you were talking to the screener. I was not privy to that conversation. So if if you talk to the screener, I'm going to take that as a signal from you that I should consult with the screener to find out what you two discussed. Thanks, Dave. <sighs> All right. Thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Dean J. D'Amelio, our screener. He and David had a lengthy little chit-chat out there, and then uh, he liked it so much, David got on the air and started talking about their conversation. I wonder so. how many times he asked Dean how he was doing. <laughs> how you doing? How, how you doing? Well, he was so overwhelmed with his conversation with Dean that he completely forgot to talk to me. So we saved him the trouble. Wait, that telephone call. Is that no, that's that's my uh, that's my designer for my house. He doesn't. He's he's been working for me for six years. He doesn't know what time I'm on. Okay. one eight hundred five eight hundred tom Now, folks, when you call in, don't tell me about your conversation with the screener. I'm on the warpath against this. You know, I've been doing talk radio so long, I'm every cliche in talk radio, I'm going after it. With with both fists. Bloody fists. Love your show. Listen all the time. You're so well informed. I don't know how you do it. I, I, I've been listening to this for so long, I can't take it anymore. I was talking to your screener. What's his name, Dino? He's such a nice young man. I was talking to him. Before I talked to you, we were talking, and I was telling him that he reminds me of my son. You know, my son... 
bless his heart, he passed away about 20 years ago. My son was just like Tito. He was an industrious young man. He worked very hard. All the girls loved him. And I was talking to the girls in the card room at my condominium the other day, and I was telling them that Dino is just wonderful. He's what your show is wonderful, and Dean is wonderful. Dean and Gary and 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 Arthur, your board operator, he's wonderful. Arthur, is he Jewish? <laughs> Arthur, I thought he, maybe he's a Jew, like you know, because his name is Arthur. You don't meet a lot of lot of young men named Arthur unless they're Jewish. And I just wanted to say I love your show and I listen all the time. And I was talking to you before I talked to your screener. I was talking to somebody else who picked. I, who was that who picked up the phone? Somebody picked. I don't know who it was. It was like an engineer or somebody picked up the phone, and I was talking to him too. And I don't know what it's doing where you are, but it's hailing out here in Tarzana, size of golf balls. I am on the warpath against talk radio. <laughs> All the cliches of talk radio. Can't take it. Jesus. There's a reason AM radio is dead. AM radio is dead. I don't care if you listen. I don't care if you're one of the five people listening to the sports radio station. AM radio is... I know we're on AM stations. Come on. Because over the years, radio stations did not put their foot down and stop Grandma from getting on the air. I want to buy some yeast cakes, and I was wondering if anybody listening would know where I could get some. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. What's your topic tonight? Oh, anyway? let me get back to that. Wait a minute. Maybe we should fast forward here. Hang on. Uh, Augie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How are you? Hello? Yes, I'm fine. Hey, Tom. Long time, first time caller. Are you backing up? No, yeah, I'm at work. You I backing drive. up a sanitation truck? What are you doing over there? Truck driver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, I was calling you. I heard about it. This sounds like the street time. outside my house when they're having a film shoot. <laughs> no, I'm not by your house, man. Okay. No, I'm away from it. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was listening to your show. I saw that show last night with that girl, uh, Tell the, the Truth, the Truth Show. Right, Moment of Truth. Yeah, I, I thought that guy would have walked off the show after I heard, uh, you know, her questions. That's just embarrassing. You know, um, I'm, I'm married. I just got married. I was with my uh, wife for nine years, off and on. And, uh, you know, if I ever heard my, my wife say something like that, that's just... That's just something I wouldn't even want to have my face. Why would anybody I would, stay for that? I wouldn't. I, I would have left. I would have said, no way. I just obviously shows you, you know, she was just in there to get some money and and get out. And I told my wife, you do that, I'd take in half of that cash. But she didn't win anything. In the end, she won nothing. Yeah, she lost. I saw that. Of course, knowing that she's an actress and a model, uh, she probably was getting a flat fee for being on the show. Just a guess here. Yeah. Yeah, but you as a guy to be sitting there, and if that's your real wife, you know, your face is known everywhere. Now. I wonder if that's uh, if that's her real husband or if she really has a husband. I wonder. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It could or if these were all out-of-work actors. But, you know, it makes me think, like, you know, now you start thinking, like, well, hey, I wonder if my, my wife or girlfriend was thinking that at the time, you know? What if an ex-boyfriend shows up one day? Believe me, of- if you're getting married, I guarantee you she's thinking that. Yeah. Because the guy who was the best lay she ever had, he was a manifestly irresponsible individual. She picked you because she knows you'll come home with your paycheck at night. <laughs> Actually, no. My wife makes more than I do. So. Then your wife well, is then your wife is homely. No, no, she's. You know, it's. Uh, I think what brought us together was more of the sex thing. So, and, you know, I just respect So her. your wife is a 10? No, she's about a 7. See, that's my point. Yeah. I've dated 10s, but they're just too... Uh, if your wife uh, makes more money than you, she's got to be a 7 or less. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. I dated 10s, 9s, and 10s, and, 
you know, everybody wants to be there, uh, be a part of that. Yeah, but you don't, so, make, you don't make enough money to get a nine or a ten. So instead, you married a a well off seven. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, I, 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 well, I've times driven. I sometimes it ain't about how much some with some women. It's not about what you have or what you own. Is you know, is how you present yourself and what you can do. You know. And how does she present herself? Um. Well, I mean, myself. I mean, prior to marrying her. Oh. I, I've had some, you know, nines or tens, you know. Because I found my way to get him in, in the sack, and, and yeah, but you needed money to keep him. Yeah, but I didn't want to keep. No, him. no, you needed to be with someone who made more money. Uh, I'm not necessarily. She didn't make uh, any money when I met her. Really? Yeah, it's kind of a was, bonus. She was a student. She was a student, and I stuck with her while she studied and helped her out. Oh boy! So now, if you divorced yeah. her, you probably get half of everything she uh, has built up. Yeah, if that happened. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, she's she's a good girl to me. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Augie. Uh, thank you for the call. Tom, Tom. like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. There's pizza for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old fashioned mom and pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. The way you guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. What kind of show on? Love your program. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about the woman on the uh, Fox game show, Moment of Truth, last night, who, uh, well, she uh, supposedly told the truth about her, her ex-boyfriend, that she thinks she should be married to her ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend asked the question. She was hooked up to a lie detector. And there was her husband there, too. And it's like, why would you stay married to somebody like that? one 800 800 tom It's Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. All right. So this is my thing. How? Where does she get off bringing her husband on the show, even if she's only with him for money? To just disrespect him in front of thousands of people, that's just spiteful and wrong. Well, just another bitch. What can I say? I think you're right. <laughs> but so I just had to call and say that because it just enrages me, and I would never, ever do that to my husband in a million years. Even if you loved your ex-boyfriend more than him? Of course. No matter what, I would never disrespect well, anybody. Let me like ask that. you a question. If you loved your ex-boyfriend more than your husband, would you still have married your husband? I would have never even thought about marriage. It's stupid. There's no point of even thinking about marriage if you have your mind on something else. It's a waste of time. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it either. So people just need to wait to get married until they know it's right. And if she was in it for money, there's no point in humiliating him in front of thousands of people. Yeah. Especially if she's taking his money. <laughs> so I just had to call and say that. And so I, like, I have now. a question for you. I was wondering if you felt the earthquake this afternoon. It was kind of a rolling motion. The jelly jars were rattling. Did you feel it? I felt it. Did you feel it? No. I live in Hidden Hills, darling, and I felt the earthquake. <laughs> Maybe somebody else who felt it can call in. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. I felt the earthquake, Tom. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just kidding, Tom. It's Steve Maiden. I'm so happy to speak with you, Tom Likas. Yes. Hey, it just blows my mind. Uh, that TV show blows my mind because the first thing that popped into my head was, wow, this is actually a time where somebody in the world somewhere might really have to tell the truth. <laughs> and, like, I'm imagining, like, courts, you know, you swear on a holy Bible, you swear, you know, that you're telling the truth, but a lot of people lie in courts all the time, right? 
Yeah, but I'm immediately suspicious when I find out that the woman uh, has an acting and modeling resume. Yeah. That that this whole show was a big fake. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I, yeah. They have to plan it. I would assume anyway that they would have to plan it to get the ratings up there. But damn, I'm just imagining if it was the truth, and you're just sitting there with your sweat breaking on your brow, like wondering what they're going to ask. You know, like one time in your life, you really have to tell the truth if you want the money. Right. You know, th this society is so used to just basically knowing they're being lied to on a regular basis, like the for real thing and all that. Stuff. You know, but if they really have to tell the truth, oh, that would just be unnerving. And it's uh, just I, my mind. I, I think if you really want to hook people up to a lie detector, let's take the remaining presidential candidates. <laughs> nice. That would be a fun mess to get into. John McCain, this is your former lobbyist now, and she's going to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, that's all I really have for you, Tom. I just, I just, just it blew my mind. Just like, actually, just imagining people telling the truth for once, because I'm so programmed in my daily functions that most people aren't going to tell the truth. That I, I just, I couldn't believe it. No. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Appreciate Thanks the for call. Having me on. Of course. I can, yeah. can you blow me the heck up? Of course, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Andre on the top like his show. Hello, yo Tom, what up, man? Not much, Andre. Hey man, I just wanted to talk about this. Man, I decided to watch it last night for for the second time, and I saw this guy, and he was just a big pussy, Tom. He was just a big one, man. I couldn't believe it. Well, I told you, TV is nothing but a big big vagina, and if you ever needed evidence of that, look at this show. I know, right? Hey, man, this, this guy, you know, he knew that this girl was in love with her ex-boyfriend. He said it on the show, and he still went ahead and, and married her. He said that he knew that they had problems about this. I don't get it, Tom, you know? This guy, I just don't, I just don't understand these guys. I will not be anybody's sloppy seconds, ever. Yeah, ever. It's, it's pitiful, man. They just don't know anything about game, man. I mean, it, it's in the handbook. You don't marry anybody's sloppy seconds, ever, man. Right. Ever. You know, let her have the ex-boyfriend who probably you know, was not as uh, reliable or dependable or didn't make as much money or you know you know the deal. Exactly, he just he just had some he had had some good stuff and she loved she loved it. <laughs> right, he didn't have anything else. He had a he had a fourteen inch personality. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to say, Tom. Can you take me out, Kobe Salve? I certainly will, Andre. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Now, our next caller says he knows something. <laughs> I don't know if he knows it or not. And people can call this show and say anything. They're anonymous. And he claims to know something. I'd like to hear what he has to say, but you have to listen with an open mind and uh, with a grain of salt. It's possible he's lying. He's anonymous, and we have no way of knowing. But what he uh, wants to tell us is tantalizing, so I'm going to put it on the air with the proviso that you should take it with a grain of salt. Henry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, hey, Tom. How's it going? Okay. Hey, uh, it's not like I know have any inside information, but I just remember seeing a commercial months ago and it was uh, her boyfriend. I'm about 90% sure he did a, uh, it was a Got Milk commercial. Really? They lock, in, they lock him in a rubber room, and they give him a box of cereal, and they don't give him any milk. And it was driving me crazy for about an hour, and I finally figured it out. That's who the guy was. I wonder what that and guy's we, name is. I don't know, but I, I'm pretty sure in my own mind that's who it was. So he's also an actor. Yeah, see, I, I think they're all actors. I think this is totally phony. And here's what I have to say about that. The federal government, ever since the quiz show scandals of the 50s, right. is supposed to be monitoring game shows to make sure they're on the up and up. And when you're sitting somebody there with uh, all these dollar amounts on the screen and everything, as far as I'm concerned, this is a game show. Now, we've proven beyond the shadow of a doubt on this show that reality shows are totally phony and the FCC doesn't care about that. But this is a game show. It's a game show. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're, where's where are the feds? Is anybody investigating this? Is anybody monitoring this? I doubt it. 
Yeah. I, I thought that show was a phony from the get-go. Interesting. All right, Henry. All right. Hey, take me out with the bomb tub. There you go, Henry. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Todd on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Dad? Not much, son. I am so pissed off now. Why? Because well, I didn't. I never heard the scandal about these being actors. But I'll tell you, if it's if they're if they're real, that dude is a big, huge, gaping vagina. <laughs> And, and let me tell you, after the after the show, I'm sitting there in the show barn telling this, telling my wife sitting next to me, and I'm like, this chick is such a skivosa, you know? She is so, this is such a a winch. But after the credits rolled, he goes up to her, and what does he do? He hugs her. I'm telling you, the guy needs some like his 101, baby. Yeah, or he needs a SAG card, one or the other. I, you know, I just could not believe it, and then, and, and then I have to sit there and kick my own ass for saying, "Why am I watching this? This is what TV has come to these days, and I'm sitting here stuck to my TV. I need to be in bed." <laughs> I don't blame you. You know, it's just. Uh, and by the way, first time caller, long time listener, and uh, you know, you guys are just you. You have you have turned my life around. I don't even wear underwear anymore, and I'm proud of it. I love that. Very nice. No more underwear. He's free balling now, baby, because he's a likest listener. That's right. <laughs> this is at. Let's cap off the hour now. This could be the best call we've gotten. This is Amy. <laughs> Amy is uh, driving uh, around the San Fernando Valley right now. She's near the intersection of Tampa and Reseda. <laughs> Hey, hey, watch your mouth. We're on the air, darling. I'm sorry. It's going awesome. Really? Totally awesome. How so? Oh, my gosh. I'm on the way to see my beautiful boyfriend. Beautiful. He's so beautiful. I would never marry Sloppy Seconds. He is great. He's he is. the love of my life. Is he really? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. my God, yes. And and is vodka the love of your life also, I hear? Oh, yes, it is. What are we drinking I'm today? Blitzed. You're blitzed. I am blitzed. Really? I am. What have we had to drink today, darling? I've had about four vodka and grapefruit juices. Really? Yes, I am. I'm on the way to see my boyfriend. Yes. So, so you're you down four greyhounds, and now you got to roll over to see your boyfriend in the valley. Yes, I am. I'm almost here. That's... <laughs> You, and you made it all the way. Are you staying in the lane and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm fine. I just called about the topic of your show about marrying sloppy seconds. I would never. My boyfriend is the hottest guy ever. Really? Ever that I've ever seen in my life. He's got. So there are women like guys. You down four greyhounds. Wait a minute. There, there are women like guys. You 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 down four uh, four greyhounds, and then you get in your car, and and you have one hand on the steering wheel, and the other trying to dial the radio station. Yes, I did because I had to call about this topic. I had to. I had to. You have no idea. This is very close to home. This is very close to home. Something you should be. It is. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Good luck on that. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. No actors here. The Tom Likas Show.